This is, again, this is the operation side. Last week we had capital, since capital went first, because capital is what really drives our operating piece. So, Mr. Cook. I'm looking, everybody's leaving. This is the exciting part of the meeting. <laughs> Finance is fun, right? Mayor, as you mentioned, last week we covered the capital budget side and the property tax rate or the recommended property tax rate for fiscal year 2017. Today we'll talk about the operating budgets. We'll focus mostly on the general fund budget because that's where the uh, taxes are collected and spent on the services that uh, I think people are, I won't say most interested in, but the it's police, it's fire, it's parks, libraries, and so forth. The presentation will be a highly summarized presentation of the recommended budget. I'm gonna ask Jay to hold up the binder and the materials that are all awaiting for you in your offices. So you can't wait. So, yeah, you can. So there's a lot of detail that we're prepared to go over as part of the, again, the fiscal year budget. Uh, but again, today we'll run through a uh, uh, summarized version of it. We talked a little bit, a little bit about this last week. We had the retreat back in February, and I, we identified a number of goals for the upcoming budget. You'll recognize some of these. The first one was preparing a budget that did not include a tax increase, and then as the Spring and summer continued. We also talked about ways that we would present a recommended budget with a property tax rate uh, property tax rate decrease, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, increasing funding for cash funded capital. You heard about that last week. Uh, again, funding our operations and priorities, and mainly. Uh, the implementation of the 2014 bond program and operating the facilities that we're building as part of that program. Transparency has been a big push, and again, preparing a budget without using any reserves. So here's the total operating budget for the city. It's about $1.6 billion. And the way we think about it is this is a big business. It's a $1.6 billion business. We run a regional water and wastewater utility, three airports, a stormwater utility, a solid waste collection, and you think about it, disposal system, convention center, Will Rogers, golf courses, and then we have the general fund, which provides a lot of the other services that we think about. But when we describe the city's budget, it's $1.6 billion, and it is really a big business, a lot of different enterprises in there. Again, we'll spend most of the time on the general fund, but as we work through the budget, we're glad to uh, talk about any of the other funds as well. Here gives you a breakdown of what the budget looks like in the current year compared to the upcoming fiscal year. Uh, just taking the general fund at the top, that will grow by a little under 5% from 610 million or 611 million to roughly 639 million. You see enterprise funds in there, we'll talk more about those uh, and special revenue funds. Breakdown of the general fund. I'm just gonna highlight that the property and sales tax make up about 75% of all revenues. And that's primarily where the growth and the revenues come from for the upcoming fiscal year, or for next fiscal year. Uh, the increase in property tax is roughly 24 million. The increase in sales tax is roughly 4 million. And the total budget's going up 29 million. So, it's predominantly the property and the sales tax. This is where we spend it. Again, just highlighting that most of the budget goes toward public safety. This, the public safety piece of this pie includes uh, municipal court, it includes code, but police and fire, just those two departments make up approximately 366 million of 
of that amount. Just a moment on this slide, since we've had a number of, um, well, I won't say conversations, there's been a lot of numbers in the newspaper. The top line is the total assessed value. So if you read in the newspaper that the total assessed value went up 12%, that's accurate. The number from 16 to 17, top line, is a 12% growth. That's not what we're able to use when we build a budget. So now we're to the second line. That's the adjusted net taxable value. That number from 49.6 to 54.5 is just under a 10% growth, All right? But that number also includes revenues that go to TIF districts. It doesn't come to the general fund. So the bottom line number is the money that we get to spend from property tax revenue, that number is growing less than 6%. And one of the reasons it doesn't follow the other trend lines is because we're recommending the decrease in the property tax rate by two cents, okay? We talked about this last week. Just as a reminder, here's the breakdown of the current property tax rate. I'll have you focus on the overall 85.5. The amount for capital here, the pay-as-you-go, 4.75, is changing. We dropped the overall tax rate by two cents. We're increasing the amount that goes to the pay-as-you-go cash side. So that requires a decrease in the other two components. You've seen the slide last week. This is what's changing for what's for operations, what's for debt, and what is for pay-as-you-go capital again resulting in a two cent reduction in the property tax rate. Again, just hitting some of the goals that we set. One is increasing the money to capital. We talked about this last week, so I won't dwell on this slide, but this is really the money that is shifting to the pay-as-you-go, cash-funded capital. Our priority in the budget, I'm gonna start with public safety. So when we talk about the uh, budget that's on the table, it includes the second year of the three-year plan for the sixth patrol division for police. It includes, oh, let's see, um, school resource officers for the new schools as well. It includes opening the fire station down at Spinks Airport. And it also reflects the general fund funding firefighters that were previously funded by a SAFER grant. So the federal grant goes away, 10 firefighter positions have to be picked up by the general fund, and so that's reflected in the uh, recommended operating budget. Infrastructure and capital maintenance we've talked about. The 2014 bond program, uh, Victory Forest Community Center will open in the upcoming fiscal year. Uh, the Silcox Animal Facility has had the, the expansion. There's two veterinarians and a supervisor that was also related to that animal shelter task force recommendations that you received earlier. Uh, we have new parks opening. Uh, Chisholm Trail Park is one of the examples. Uh, so this is uh, meeting our commitment of one building the projects that were in the 2014 bond program, but then operating them once they come online. Neighborhood improvements we talked about last week. That's a half penny that's in the cash funded part of the page you go. And then uh, other priorities in the budget, uh, technology and training, and making sure we have competitive compensation and benefits and pay for performance. <laughs> Still on the general fund, I talked about the property tax going up 20, property tax revenue going up 24 million, sales tax goes up about 4 million. That's really where all the new growth is in the general fund budget. Uh, a lot of that is being then shifted to the pay as you go capital, and then we've got public safety, new facilities, pay for performance, and then all other uh, adjustments in the budget. 
The transparency side, uh, uh, this is the second year we worked with stakeholders, stakeholders being essentially chairs, vice chairs of the different advisory committees. So they got to participate in the budget process since we started back in March. Uh, the idea is to get feedback throughout the budget process and to share with them also where we stood along the way. Communication with departments has uh, always been important. And then this last part, the align, aligning funding and positions is really the continuation of making sure that all our funds are self-sustaining, right? So we had some funds that were underwater, we had some funds that were carrying expenditures that could not do that over the long term, and so this is the second year of making some changes to, as we call it, um, align the funding and positions for sustainability. Also, for two years in a row, we're not using any reserves to, to balance uh, the budget. Um, that goes without saying. That's the general fund. Water and sewer fund, I'm just gonna touch on some of these other funds briefly. Uh, or our enterprise funds first. Here's the breakdown. Water and sewer obviously being the largest. But we also have a number of other enterprise funds in there. Here's the change year to year for the different enterprise funds. If you look at all of the changes, just a little over 3% on a year to year basis. Water and sewer, the first two bullets up there, the revenue requirements for water and wastewater with a lot of effort from the staff in the water fund Below 1.5 for water, and essentially 1.1 for the wastewater side. There's still costs driving that budget. The biggest uh, is the cost of raw water, which we buy from our partners at the TRWD. And those are some other costs that are in the budget. Stormwater utility, no fee increase. We're focusing on a long-term financial plan and, uh, again, a lot on capital. That revenue growth year-to-year -year is approximately 3%. Solid waste, no fee increase. And you've heard about the 20-year master plan that's being developed uh, for solid waste. Municipal airports, we have Spinks, Meacham, uh, an alliance. And special revenue. Let me jump to what it looks like year to year. CCPD we uh, put on top. That's for the Crime Control and Prevention District. I'll talk more about that. We have culture and tourism, municipal golf, red light enforcement, environmental protection and others. CCPD. Sales tax revenue is estimated at 4% growth, just like the general fund. It's funding school security officers, code blue, positions for code blue. We're gonna plan to conduct four recruiting classes, three of which will graduate during fiscal year 2017. Uh, it includes body cams to equip all patrol officers. You know that Fort Worth was early into the body cams for officers, and this will fully equip uh, patrol. And there's money in there to replace a helicopter. Uh, and that's where the use of the fund balance comes from, is to uh, do the helicopter. Culture and tourism. Again, the operation of the convention center and Will Rogers. Uh, when we talked about the capital budget, that's really the, uh, what I'd say the big part of the upcoming year is the financing of the uh, arena. 
Municipal Golf. <clears throat> you will remember this used to be considered an enterprise fund. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't an enterprise fund could it because it wasn't self-sustaining, right? So we've now put it in a special revenue fund. We contribute about six hundred thousand dollars a year to the golf fund to subsidize the operations along the way. Big news for the upcoming year is that the new Rockwood golf course were, will open this fall. And so the revenues and expenditures will go back up with the opening of the new golf course. Red light enforcement. This was one of the funds where during the recession, I think we had moved some positions from the general fund to the red light fund. That's not self-sustaining over the long haul. So we've started that process of moving positions back to the general fund. And again, this is an item, Mr. Jordan, that the state has a lot of interest in as well. And uh, that might be part of the legislative, uh, one of the legislative issues coming up. Let me briefly uh, talk about positions. The budget, all funds, net increase of positions is just over 142 positions. Most of them in the general fund. Most of those are related to the fire stations, the grant being transferred to the general fund, and the uh, six patrol division. Those are the ups and downs. We are reducing in number. Uh, those are on the right side of the column. On the left side of the column are the where we're adding the positions. I failed to mention so far, there are five being added in planning for workload. I think we all know the workload that Randall and his staff have uh, had to deal with with the uh, rebounding economy. So just summarizing the budget, we're reducing the property tax rate two cents. That's the recommendation. It's a priority on the public safety. You've heard that with the uh, items being added both in police and fire. More money for capital. And part of that capital was for neighborhoods and implementing the 2014 bond program and opening those new facilities. And again, not using any reserves to balance the budget. Here's the schedule moving forward. And again, staff, we're looking forward to working with you on any of the details and any of the funds uh, on the budget. This is the schedule so far. The first budget work session is scheduled for August 25th. We have several requirements to do the CCPD budget so part of that's going to be on August 16th. Part of that will be on August 25th. And again, we'll have as many budget work sessions as we need to work through the budget with the current plan that we'll have the budget adopted on September 13th. And at the same time, we have to have three public hearings on the budget as well during that period of time. I want to take this opportunity. There's a lot of work that goes into preparing a budget and let me ask the budget staff to stand up here. Good job. Good. They're all working over the weekend too, right? To make sure that this all got finished and finalized for the day. So it's super work. So I want to thank that team and really thank all the departments too. The departments put in a tremendous amount of effort and again, getting the budget to where it is today, all the staff looks forward to working with you on addressing any of these issues as we work toward finalizing the budget for fiscal year 2017. With that, I'll be glad to answer any questions. David, I think it's an excellent budget. I think uh, budget and finance are being commended. I was here Saturday, and one of the budget folks was here for a meeting, had his kids with him, and they were looking at council and looking back here to see where we were. It was kind of fun for them to see it, but your hard work is much appreciated. We do appreciate it. I think this is an excellent budget. 
that delivers a two cent reduction, not just because it's the right thing to do that we don't take that whole windfall and just spend it, but it also continues to make us, as we said last week, more competitive in the market. You saw also today's announcement that our counterparts to the east were dropping their tax rate also. Everybody realizes they have to stay there, but this budget continues to focus on public safety and our neighborhoods and transparency and still deliver the services that we need while managing to the growth that we're having. We were in Kerry and Dennis's area last night at Heritage and talked a little bit about getting one big Fort Worth because we're so geographically diverse that we have to pull people in and this will allow us to do that with the sixth division and the library and several other things. So I really think y'all have done a great job on it. So. Yeah, David, you and I had visited briefly on two of these issues and I, I told you I was gonna bring them up just for future discussion. Number one, we have an aging population and I had asked uh, senior citizens of, uh, of Greater Tarrant County had asked for some funding to provide uh, uh, full-time directors at some of the senior citizen centers. I know that in Council District 2 right now they're sharing a director between the North Side and Diamond Hill Senior Citizen Center. I didn't know where that stood and I'd like to see if we could fund that. The second issue is more of a public policy issue. Uh, the T put out their master plan uh, and they had a, a, a proposal for at least starting a, a, a program in North Fort Worth uh, and that was gonna be the, the, the starting point because as you know, we need to have a world-class public transit system and, I, and you and I had briefly discussed what the discussions were on how we help the T fund that, at least that first part. So I wanna continue having that discussion. The plan that I saw I don't remember the number, so don't hold me to it. It was like $3 million or so for at least the North Fort Worth area. I know, but citywide, it's a larger price tag. So I want to have a larger discussion about how we fund public transit, uh, and, you know, even starting with this budget going forward, uh, because I do believe there is some validity to the argument that half a cent doesn't get us there. So we're going to have to look at how we get there if we want a world-class public transit system in our city as we continue to grow, because right now, the T's doing their best, but we're not there yet. Um, we've gone to other cities, we've seen excellent mass transit systems, and we don't have it there. We have a bond program coming up in 20. We really need to be creative. We need to talk to the county and other partners. How do we get there? So I want to continue to have that. And then we need to have a workshop. Let's have a workshop on how we fund mass transit in our city and our county. Jungus. One of the things, and David, I sort of alluded to it, and you and I have talked about it one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, about, and it's not just to talk to our legislature in the future battle that we've got coming, but it's to talk to our citizens uh, who are concerned about the taxes and the property tax rate. And that is, um, when you show us the the increased appraisals you know we there's a lot of things that go into that the, the, you know each year we have more and more uh, more folks that become 65 yes and uh, each year we bring in uh, new houses and new commercial in, into the, the uh, uh, into the inventory in in you know on paper you know I could argue that, well, not just two cents, we ought to be reducing it by five cents or eight cents or 10 cents. Everybody's gonna have a different opinion on that. But what we have to have a dis discussion of it is how you got to, to that two cents, understanding we've got growth that's coming, understanding we've got to pay for that growth, not only in um, infrastructure, but in public safety, and, sure. and you've said the chief has a, a strategic plan that he's coming forward with, and I look forward to hearing that. But I think we need to have time set aside for the strategy that you and staff used to say two cents was the right number, because, it, you know, we. Sal's going to say, well, we need to do the transit, and there's several of us that support transit, but that's not our role. You know, we did away with the $7 million we, that, that the T was paying in street use fees that we could argue about. So um, uh, all I'm, I'm saying is in your exercise, allow us, we went through the uh, retreat, but come back to us and talk about why is two cents the right number because at the end of the day, uh, that's, that's been sort of a negative when you're looking at us, but 
you go back to 2008, 2009, when we didn't have the growth rate that, that we're experiencing, we still had growth. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we have to understand is we're not putting a future tax burden on a future council, that we're taking care of the strategy as we grow. And we're not just doing it to talk to the taxpayer, we're doing it because it's the right thing to do. So glad I, I'd leave some time in the, yeah. in the budget hearings for us to work through that number with you and know your thought process. You and I've talked about it and, and I think it's, it is the right thing to do, but you didn't just pick it out of the air and, and we need to understand where that came from and understand because we're going to talk, be talking to the legislature who thinks that hey, we're getting 14% increases in, in our revenue base. No, it, we're not. And uh, we, we have to understand the distinctions of what we're paying for with growth and yes. what we're doing with maintenance and uh, going forward. Yeah. So thank you. Be glad. Sam. Well, I'll certainly echo what uh, Sal said about transportation. Uh, we're not ever going to have a world-class transportation uh, the way we're going about it right now. Uh, if we're expecting the T to make a profit, it ain't going to happen. Uh, so we have got to strongly look at, at what the T is doing uh, because what they're doing right now is to try and make more efficient the systems that they've got in mm -hmm. place. But they're not adding any. They're just Except tax kind of rail. moving the deck chairs around on the Titanic would be what it would be. But to make it more uh, particularly focused on things like the north side of town and whatnot, where we know there's some interest. Uh, so I, you know, and then from Jungus' standpoint, I think we need to validate two cents. But I also tell you that there's infrastructure that's required in this city, and I don't want to see us go make a huge tax reduction and then wind up back where we were when I first came on the council. So I think we need to really be weighing the best interests of the citizens because when you talk about a two cent reduction, you're not talking about a grand amount of funding from the city standpoint. And that's one of the things that we probably need to focus on with our citizens is you want things from us. We're only about a third of the total tax bill that you're paying. Uh, sure, we want to make sure that you're, you're getting a fair share and we're, we're utilizing the taxpayer funds correctly. But at the same time, we want to make sure that we are providing the, the infrastructure and the uh, services that our citizens expect and, and demand. When I was tax assessor, it used to be interesting when I would speak to groups, one of the things that I would do would poll them and say, can you name 10 things that your property taxes pay for? And rarely could anybody get to 10 things that it pays for. They would kind of hum and haw and, and not quite get there. Most people who study it at all can, but I think as council it would behoove us to be out working through social media and other ways to promote, to say what we pay for and what sales tax and property taxes together pay for. David, it might be interesting in this budget workshop to get a comparison back to where we were before the recession when we started cutting on the number of employees that we had versus the growth in the city and where we are now because mm -hmm. we're pretty much back where we were, but yet the city has grown faster than we have added, which means that we're doing a much better job of delivering those services more efficiently. Glad to. Gina? Mayor, when you mentioned people not knowing what, what they're getting with their tax dollars, it brings me back to my conversation before about those signs that we, we grew up reading your tax dollars at work. I think it's important that people know exactly what they're getting because they supported our recommendations through the bond issue because before we go back, if we don't tell them this is where it came from, it's not, they're not just gonna go online every day and look to see what's going on. And so I've seen some more of those signs recently, and they're tied to the bond issue, of course. But you know, I'd really like to stress the point to staff in communicating to realize that not everybody is online. And it's the people who drive on the, the bad streets with the potholes who need to see that, that sign. And the other thing I'll, I'll mention again, Sal brought this up, the sacred cow that we have is the you know, crime control district, the money there. The, you know, that, that's the other half cent that the T needs. Mm -hmm. 
It's, it's as plain as day. We don't have to go do some kind of surgery to find money throughout that budget. It's, it's, that's the other half cent. And so I think when we have a conversation on transportation, making it world class, we need to be bold enough to put that on the table in that discussion. Certainly worth looking at. Thank you, David. Thank you. Jungus, did you have something else? Yeah, just a follow-up comment. And let me say I fully support a reduction in the tax rate. Okay, for start there, and and but what we have to walk through is is a process to ensure that we're strategic, and we mentioned the CCPD, and looking back uh, with with hindsight, what previous councils do, did, and and it's not a criticism, but if you compare the revenues that were generated by the CCPD, and the reduction in the tax rate. I think you'll find that the CCPD is about 60 million or a little over, and the reduction of for going from 97 to 85 is about 60 million dollars. So, the, in Texas, you've got to have a balanced budget, and we balance ours every year. It, it, I think there's a huge misconception that we don't uh, do that, but we do. Well, what a balanced budget means is. You either reduce your, t if you have a surplus over last year, you either spend it or you give it back to the taxpayers. So the strategy you have to wrestle with, the strategy we have to wrestle with, are that the decisions that we make this year don't impact the strategy of the growth that the city's on in the future. And uh, let's not just reduce the tax rate to, re to supplant the CCPD that was done previously, but let's do it because it's the right thing to do. And I firmly believe it's the right thing to do and we can find ways, uh, th there's other ways to pay for transit and it doesn't have to be on our back. Sal. I wanna commend David and the staff. Uh, this is a, a very good budget. I support the city manager's recommendation on the two cent tax rate reduction. I just want to have a larger policy discussion on how we fund uh, public transit, mass transit, and again, my, my specific request about senior citizen services. But uh, this is a great effort. We're, we're prioritizing all the right things. Uh, the economy has rebounded. We do have more tax revenue. There has been an increase in appraised values. People's property taxes are likely not going to go down because there's other taxing entities. Uh, but, you know, and we do have additional tax revenue, but we have a lot of needs. We have both the older city, older section of the city that needs continued attention as well as the newer parts of the city. So I think this is that proverbial balance that the city manager has done that we as policyholders have to look at in the upcoming budget work session. So I want to commend you and your staff for your hard work, David, and thank you for visiting with us and addressing our concerns. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on.